So how does God want me to live? We're gonna answer that question. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jasmine Antoine. I'm so happy to have you. And I hope that you find the video encouraging. Let's get into it. to imagine going into a home that's completely filthy. I mean, I really want you all to imagine this with me. Imagine going into a kitchen where the sink is filled with so many dishes, dishes that have not been washed for weeks. Imagine taking a tour around a home and you notice that every room is worse than the last one. Imagine going into a home where the living room looks nice. It's all tidy, it's put together. They have their accent colors looking cute. But then when you go to a private room or a door that's been shut and you open it and you see just a mess, a huge mess. I mean, what are you gonna think when you see these homes? What's gonna go across your mind as you're walking in these homes and you're seeing that every room is looking worse than the last or you're noticing that some people have some things hidden behind closed doors. What are you thinking? You're possibly thinking that, man, they need to clean this home. It is dirty, it is filthy. I would think those things. I would think that they would need to clean their home ASAP. Y'all, some of our hearts are looking like the homes that I just led you to imagine. And some of our hearts are looking like the vision that God gave Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter eight. I'm gonna tell you about it, stay with me. In Ezekiel chapter eight, God is taking Ezekiel on a tour through the temple of God. The temple of God is where God's presence was dwelling. In the temple, people came to offer sacrifices and offerings and to worship the Lord. In this vision that God was showing Ezekiel, the Lord showed him all the idolatry that was going on within the temple. For those that don't know, idolatry is basically putting an idol before God or just worshiping an idol. As God was showing Ezekiel around the temple, the Lord kept telling him, you're gonna see things that are even more detestable. You're gonna see things that are worse than this. God showed Ezekiel an idol that was at the entrance of the temple. God also showed Ezekiel how there were engravings that were on the temple's walls, engravings of idols and unclean animals, things that did not please God. Ezekiel was also shown how there were people who were mourning the death of a God or an idol. And the Lord also revealed to Ezekiel how there were 25 men with their backs facing the temple of God, but were bowing down to the sun in the east. Now, according to the Bible, God's presence isn't dwelling in a building any longer. God's presence is dwelling in his children. We are now the temple of God. If we have accepted Christ, if we have chosen to believe in what Jesus has done for us and that he is the risen king, we are now the temple of God. But remember what I said? I said that some of our hearts are looking like Ezekiel chapter 8. Some of our hearts are looking like this mess. Some of our hearts are holding on to idolatry. Some of y'all probably just disagreed and said, well, Jasmine, I don't have a gold shrine on my table that I'm bowing down to. I don't have a gold shrine on my table that I'm saying, hey, I love you, I worship you. No, <laughs> some of y'all probably don't have that. But listen to this. Some of y'all probably have some sin in your heart that you haven't let go of. Some of y'all probably have some sin in your heart that you haven't allowed God to purify you from. Some of y'all probably have some sin in your heart that you're proud of. Some of y'all probably have some sin in your heart that you haven't really asked God to clean it up. When you hold on to sin, it becomes an idol because you have placed value on it. If you're holding on to it, you have placed value on it. It's sin because we shouldn't hold on to anything that doesn't please God. It's also sin because the only thing, the only one who should truly be taking up residence in our hearts is God. You know how I gave you an analogy of a dirty and filthy home? I gave that analogy because that's how some of our hearts are looking like. Some of us um, have sin just all over the place. Like, like it's, it's clearly seen. And some of us have some sin that's just been tucked away where we don't want people to know this side of us or we don't want people to know that we're harboring this in our hearts. But God wants to clean it up. God wants you to have a clean heart. God wants to purify you. 
When my sisters and I were younger, I remember my mom would tell us that we needed to spring clean. We needed to deep clean the house. And I would look at her confused because everything seemed clean. I'm like, mom, everything looks perfectly fine. Nothing seems like it needs to be touched. Everything looks squeaky clean. She would then tell me that you need to look for dirt. And so then when I would go around the house and kind of take a closer look at things, I would realize, oh yeah, this could this could take another wiper. Oh yeah, that is looking kind of dusty. Let me let me let me clean that off. We need to do the same thing. We need to take a closer look at our hearts to realize what is it that needs to be clean? What is it that needs to be purified? What is it that I need to surrender to God? But you can't do this on your own. You cannot do this on your own. You have to allow God to examine your hearts. It is only in his presence that you will be convicted of sin. It is only in his presence that you will know what you need to give over to him. It is only in his presence that you will realize, oh, I got this thing tucked away over here. I need to give this to God. I need to ask this person for forgiveness. I need to give up this sin that I keep indulging in. I need to give up this thing that I keep holding on to. So the question is, how do I allow God to examine my heart? You start reading the Bible. You start spending time in worship and prayer. Doing those things will allow God to speak to you. Doing those things will bring things to the surface. And you know, I can, if I, if I can be honest here, if I can be honest, <laughs> God just spoke to me about myself just the other day. He let me see something that I just kind of tucked away within my heart. I realized that I had some unforgiveness in my heart and I also had some other things that I was harboring within my heart. I was so broken when the Lord showed this to me. I mean, I sobbed, I cried. Ezekiel 8 wrecked me, but that's good. It's good because God is cleaning me up. It's good because God is making me holy. We want to be clean because we want to glorify God. We want to be purified because we want people to see Jesus through us. So the question is, how does God want me to live? The answer is a holy life. In Matthew 5, 48, the scripture tells us to be perfect like our Father in heaven is perfect. But can we truly be perfect? No, God knows that we are dust. That's in the Bible as well. God knows that we've been created from dust. He knows that we're gonna mess up, but God wants us to strive. He wants us to strive to be like him. In doing this, we are fulfilling our purpose. We are giving glory to God and we're also showing him love. Guys, I don't wanna have a heart like the, the temple that was portrayed here in Ezekiel chapter eight. I don't wanna have a heart like that. I don't wanna have a mind like that. When God examines my heart, I want him to see a place that is full of worship, that is filled with prayer, that is truly adoring him, that's not putting anything before him. And I hope that you want that as well. I hope that you have the mindset that thinks, man, when God examines my heart, I want him to know that he's being reverent. I want God to know that he's being honored here in my life. When you allow God to examine your heart, you might possibly feel extremely guilty. And that's okay. We want to we wanna repent from our sins. We want to turn away from sin. We want to glorify God. But I don't want you to take on shame. I don't want you to feel like, man, I can't live this way. Like, I'm so imperfect. I'm just going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to live for God anymore. This is too hard. I'm done with my relationship with Jesus. No, please don't do that. Allow God to just help you. Know that God's grace is so big. Know that God's love is so huge for you. He is patient with you. He loves you. He adores you. He's walking with you, sis. He doesn't want you to throw in the towel. He wants you to keep going. And I want you to keep going, keep walking with Christ. He loves you. He loves you. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with a sister, a bestie, a cousin, or an auntie, maybe even your mama. If you found it encouraging, hopefully they will find it encouraging as well. Also, if you enjoy content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Join the family. I'd love to have you. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified when new content is available. I love you guys, and Jesus loves you so much more. Bye. So in Ezekiel chapter 8, in Ezekiel chapter 8, God takes Ezekiel, let's get this down, let's do it, okay.